Okay, so that awesome Cybertruck laser effect is what we're gonna do today. I'm not gonna spend too much time with the modeling because this is not a modeling tutorial. In this video we'll focus more on the effects. And you can use this effect on any model. Though it's good to keep in mind that it will probably work best with models that don't have too dense geometry. Which is obviously why this awesome new Cybertruck is a very good match for this effect. Okay, the model is ready. Now how do we do the lasers? Let's first do the long horizontal ones. The idea is to just add a bunch of long thin cylinders around the vehicle and then use material nodes to do the flickering effect. We'll be using EV with this render just because it's about a million times quicker to render with all the volumetric stuff in there. But you can use cycles just as well with basically the same node setup with maybe some minor tweaks. There's lots of ways to do this effect, but make sure that the laser beams are all joined into one object for this specific setup to work. The basic idea with the material is to add an emission transparent mix and to drive that mix factor with a noise texture. And don't forget to change the material's blend mode to alpha blend to actually see some transparency. For the final render I used alpha hashed because I ended up using volumetric lighting in the final scene and I found that this alpha blend option leaves the supposedly transparent parts slightly visible. I don't know why that is, but it's quicker to preview things with this alpha blend so I used that while preparing the scene and then switched everything to alpha hashed for the final renders. Okay, so let's add a simple noise texture and plug it in the mix factor. And if you don't see much happening initially, you might have to add a color ramp node to bring up the whites a bit more aggressively because those are the transparent parts of the mix. And also change the texture coordinate to object to make the noise a bit more uniform. So we now have a noise texture controlling the mix, but it's noisy even in the direction of the lasers, which we don't want. To fix that, just scale the vector mapping to zero along the laser's axis, which is Y in this case. Now it looks better, but we still need to do the flickering. Before that I actually removed about half of the lasers because I felt that it looked a bit too crowded, but now let's get to the flickering. The idea is to just drive forward the X location of the vector mapping node, which sort of changes the form of the noise through time, and ends up looking kind of like the lasers are flickering. The nice thing is that there's now a form to the flicker from the noise texture, so it's not completely random for each laser, which results in a more fluid looking effect. We could just animate this X property right here in the node, but it has a couple downsides. It quickly gets annoying to hunt for the animated values in the different node trees, and if many objects are using the same material, it also clutters the dope sheet unnecessarily. Plus it's nice to see the values visually in the scene, so we'll set up a basic driver system for all the animatable material values. It's actually super easy to do now in Blender 2.8. Just add an empty object somewhere and choose a property that you want to use for driving something else. In this case I used the X location of the object. Just right click the property and press copy as new driver. Now this specific property is in the memory and you can go to the X factor in the material node, right click that and choose paste driver. And that's it. Now when you move this empty in the scene it drives that X value in the node. Okay let's then quickly also see how to do the random flickering short lines around the truck. Just copy the main truck object, move it into a new collection, go to edit mode, delete all the faces but leave the edges intact. Then run the edge split command to detach all the edges from each other. Scale up the edges with the pivot point set to individual origins so that they stay in the same place but become longer. Then separate by loose parts to make each edge its own object and use the randomized transform operator to offset the locations randomly. Convert them all to curves and give them some depth which is quickest to do in the command line but can also be done manually. And then create a new material for them. You can use the UV coordinates of the curves to make a smooth transparency fade to the edges of the curves. The flickering is done with the object info node's random output, which basically just assigns each of the curve objects a value between 0 and 1. We can then use that value with a color ramp to have some of the curves be randomly transparent. Then by adding a drivable value to this random output and taking a modulo 1 of that value, we have an infinitely repeating sequence of random flashes that we can drive with this one value. Nice. The wireframe effect is just another copy of the truck and wheel objects with the wireframe modifier, fading to transparent from both sides with a gradient texture. And the sweep from front to back is done by again driving the X coordinate of the texture with an empty object. And that's pretty much it. Now it's just a case of adding some details, making the scene look prettier, and animating all of the controllers to make the final effect. The swirling fog effect is basically just a cube with a volumetric material, and the density of the volume controlled by an animated noise texture. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching. 